Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, taking a look at some of the guns they're going to be selling in their upcoming February of 2018 regional auction. And today we have an Albanian SKS. This is, you could say, either the most common of the rare SKSs, or the rarest of the common SKSs. There are five major countries that produce substantial numbers of SKSs, and they would be Russia, China, Yugoslavia, Romania, and Albania. And of those five, the Albanian is the scarcest. Now, it's not quite as rare as uh, the really uncommon ones, like North Vietnam and uh, East Germany, but it's a pretty unusual variant. So uh, we're going to take a quick look at it, and then we're going to compare it to a standard Chinese SKS and see what differences there are. Because where a lot of SKSs vary pretty much only in marking, there are some very definite unique features to the Albanian one. So the backstory of this rifle begins with the ruler of Albania from World War II until his death in 1985, a guy named Anver Hocha. And he was a pretty hardcore Marxist, actually, literally Marxist. Um, he broke from Yugoslavia and uh, kind of turned to the Soviet Union for general partnership, aid, uh, foreign trade, that sort of thing, uh, in the late 1940s. Uh, he was quite fond of Stalin. However, after Stalin died, and when the Soviet Union began to liberalize a bit, the relationship with between Albania and the Soviet Union started to get kind of not so great. Um, Hocha really disliked the liberalization of the Soviet Union, and so he started to pivot towards uh, more of an alliance with China. China, at the time being ruled by Mao, was a much more hardline sort of uh, government. Uh, political philosophy. And so it was this alliance with the Chinese that led to this rifle. So uh, in 1962, China licensed production of the SKS, the Chinese Type 56 SKS, to the Albanians. And they sent in some advisors to help set up tooling and produce this rifle. Uh, it would end up going into production uh, in 1967 and was produced until 1978. By the late 1970s, the Albanian relationship with China was also falling apart. Um, we don't need to get into the, the political repercussions for Albania. Suffice to say, by 1978, the relationship with China was pretty much over, and production of the SKS was also pretty much over. Um, now, there are, there are known production for these years because most of the rifles are actually dated, including this one. There's a small number that are not. And there is some question as to what those rifles specifically are. Probably the best theory is that they are the earliest of the rifles. Uh, after they made them for a year or a couple years, they decided that they ought to start uh, dating them all in addition to serializing them. So uh, that's the most likely theory, although no one can say for sure. Now there is also a gap uh, between 1972 and 75 when they did not manufacture any. That is possibly because Albania was tooling up to produce AKs, or it might just have been that they were uh, buying Type 63 rifles from the Chinese for military assistance instead of making SKSs. It's kind of hard. No one really knows exactly what the reason is for that gap in production. But uh, that's pretty much the basics. Let's go ahead and compare this to a standard Chinese rifle. The most obvious visually identifiable difference that really marks an Albanian SKS is the handguard. So this is a Chinese standard uh, Type 56, and this is our Albanian SKS. And you can see that on the Chinese one, the handguard covers a little more than half of the gas tube. On the Albanian, and only on the Albanian, not any of the other variants made by any other country, the upper handguard actually covers the entire gas tube. And then this is a little less noticeable, but the lower handguard, uh, the stock really, is about two inches longer in order to make up the same length. So on the Chinese one, the stock ends here. On the Albanian, it comes all the way out to there. Since I did mention the serial numbers, let's just start with that. Uh, serial number will be marked in full on the left side of the receiver. It's a five-digit number, although I don't believe there was... In fact, there was never any year that they had uh, more than 9,999. So they'll all be two, three, or four digit numbers with a, a leading zero. And then the last two digits are the year of production. So this is a 1978. That's one of the more common years uh, and production, basically the 35th hundred one. The serial number will be located on the receiver, as well as several other places. The bottom of the magazine, the bottom of the trigger guard, 
the back of the receiver cover, the top of the bolt, and the side of the stock. And these serial numbers do correspond to exactly the same places that the Chinese marked serial numbers on their guns. The next most obvious difference is the charging handle. The Albanian guns, and only the Albanian guns amongst all production of SKSs, have this kind of smoothed hook-shaped sort of charging handle, where the Chinese guns, and most of the others out there, uh, have a cylindrical uh, bolt handle with nice knurling on the end. Exactly why they made that change is a little hard to say. The handguard change really makes sense. Uh, you do get better protection for the shooter by having a full-length handguard. This could be that someone thought this was a more comfortable charging handle to use. It might be that it was just uh, simpler to manufacture. Um, there's really no authoritative source on that. As we move into more subtle differences, the next thing we'll look at is the magazine well, or the magazine body itself. On the Albanian SKS here, this kind of comes down and has a curve to it right there at the, the tip. On the Chinese rifles, that's much more of a flat uh, surface. Not, not quite entirely flat, but you can see the difference in profile there. And that is, again, distinctive to Albanian. And once again, I can't give you any specific uh, reason why it was done that way. Next up we have the bayonets. Uh, these both use the exact same style of bayonet. It's a spike-style bayonet. Uh, the Chinese ones are just slightly longer than the Albanian. The, the blade itself, I believe, is 11 and 7 eighths inch on the Chinese, and 11 inches on the Albanian. So uh, not quite interchangeable, that's a relevant point. If you have an Albanian rifle missing its bayonet, a Chinese one will not fit unless you have it shortened. The storage in the buttstock is also slightly different. Standard SKS rifles, including the Chinese, have just one trap door back here for a cleaning kit. The Albanians put in two. One is for a cleaning kit, and one is for an oil and solvent bottle. That is, again, distinctive of Albanian rifles. And lastly, getting to some pretty esoteric little details. If you look through the vent in the handguard, you can see that the gas tube here has three vent holes, and it's got three on both sides, the left and the right, where standard SKSs like the Chinese have just one vent hole on either side. So there's the Albanian SKS in a nutshell, mechanically identical to a Chinese Type 56, but with a few aesthetic differences. In total, something like 15 to 20,000 Albanian SKS rifles were produced. Uh, as far as I know, nobody actually has an exact figure. Uh, about a third of those were imported into the US. Again, I've seen numbers of 5,700, 6,000 in that range, which seems to make sense. Uh, a lot of these rifles were destroyed uh, by the UN during the Balkan Wars in the 1990s. And so that's where a lot of them... that's why a lot of them did not end up in the United States. Uh, the rest of them did. And so for being a fairly rare variant, they're actually not incredibly difficult to find here. Uh, although they are certainly one of those rifles that will get, s bit by bit, they will become scarcer and scarcer as collectors decide that they are interesting, as the SKS gets a little more uh, reputation as a collectible rifle instead of just a $99 junk bin special like it used to be. So I think these are pretty cool guns. Um, this particular one is, a, well, a all matching, really nice example. So hopefully you guys enjoyed watching the video. If you would like to have this particular one yourself, take a look at the description text below. You'll find a link there to Rock Island's catalog page on this guy. It's part of a batch, so it comes with, I believe, one other rifle. Uh, over at that link you can see the other rifle that it comes with, pictures, description, all that sort of good stuff. Thanks for watching.